Our today's topic is uh, why OBC is rated like 7.2 kilowatt hours, 11 kilo hours and 22 kilowatt hours. So we will try to understand this rating and then how it is derived and why it is derived like this. So before going to that, we will try to understand from one of the example recently launched by the two electric vehicle BE6E and XEV9E which is based on Anglo platform so where they are providing the two type of charging one is the fast charging that is nothing but DC charging and other is the slow charging that is the AC charging so in fast charging if you see the 20 to 80 percent charge can be done in 20 minutes using a 175 kilowatt of DC fast charger second charging is AC charging and where you have the two option first is the 11 kilowatt and other one is the 7.2 kilowatt if you are taking the charging time for 79 kilowatt hours battery pack with the help of 11 kilowatt charger it will take around 8 hours and if you are using the 7.2 kilowatt charger then it will take 11.7 hours so ac charging is the slow charging and dc charging is the fast charging let me give you one example that you have a water bucket and this water bucket capacity is 5 liter okay so you want to fill this water bucket with the help of one mug and this one mug capacity is one liter so if you are filling with this particular one mug this five liter then it will take you suppose one liter one liter water if you are filling it will take suppose one hour then five liter will take around five hours but when you are taking the two liter mug okay two liter mug and you are filling from this two liter mug to this five five liter water in this particular bucket then it will just take the 2.5 hour just just half of the what we are taking from the one one liter mug so you just understand this particular is a this is our battery pack capacity and this is our battery charger so you just understand in this form that if your mug capacity is more then you will be able to fill this particular bucket in a very short span of time so this is our understanding so you you can have one question that why we can't use the dc fast charger every time and why we are going even the 11 kilowatt or 7.2 kilowatt so answer of this question is dc fast charger are very costly and they are very complex in installation you can't put those dc fast charger in your home second thing they are very costly and they require a complex setup to install those DC charger. So that is one thing that DC charger you can't use everywhere. Second thing, there is a difference between AC and DC charging that we will try to understand. So let's move to the next slide. So here we will try to understand that. So this battery requires the DC, correct? To charge it. The normal battery but when you are talking about the power grid supply so this always a ac current right so when you have the ac as a input and dc you want as a uh, battery input then you have to convert somewhere ac to dc so there are two way to convert this ac to dc first is you can convert within the vehicle which is called onboard charger and the purpose of this onboard charger is to convert the ac to dc within the vehicle but suppose if you do not want to convert the AC to DC within the vehicle, you want to convert it outside. So what is the way? Like we will put one DC fast charging station and where this particular AC is converting to the DC. So this is also one way and you are directly feeding to your vehicle DC. So when you are converting within the vehicle, this is called AC charging. When you are converting your AC to DC outside the vehicle, this is called offboard charging or the DC charging or the fast charging. And AC charging is called as slow charging. Slow charging, why it is called? Because in AC charging, you have the option of 7.2 kilowatt, 11 kilowatt, then you have the 22 kilowatt. But in case of DC charging, you have the option of 50 kilowatt, 
then you have the you have the option of 100 kilowatt then you have 175 kilowatt which recently we have seen then you can charge up to 450 kilowatt also from the dc charging station so this much power you can pump into your battery with the help of dc charging station that's why they call as fast charger dc fast charger and ac is called as a slow charger now we will try to understand in ac charging why these value are 7.2 kilowatt 11 kilowatt and 22 kilowatt you can see here this is the one component that is called our ovc which is used to convert the ac to dc and onboard charger so one thing here you might have noticed that level one charging where 230 volt less than if level one then less than 3.3 kilowatt and level two where you have the three point more than 3.3 kilowatt here you have seen that this is the ac charging station but here you can do all these things in your household also so we will try to understand that how this source value comes like less than 3.3 kilowatt and in level two it is coming more than 3.3 kilowatt in the next slide so before going to that charging let's see that what are the available options in india for the battery capacity and the charging time so if you see this is the battery capacity from the tata car ev that is ranging from 45 to 55 kilowatt hours and the charging time is 40 minutes for the 60 kilowatt hours so these all are marketing strategy so this is not a ac charging time this is a dc charging time and dc chargers you can not install at your home you have to go some somewhere they are installed properly some public areas okay so all these if you see that they have given always the dc charging time that 140 kilowatt hours if you see the mahindra b6 which is recently launched 59 kilowatt hour battery pack it can charge in 20 minutes tata nexon ev where your battery pack is 40 to 46 k kilowatt hours but you are using if 50 kilowatt hour dc charger then it is taking the more time 56 minutes we will try to understand with taking two main examples so tata car ev 55 kilowatt hour battery pack charging time for the ac if you are using the 7.2 kilowatt of charger it will take 7.9 hours from charging 10 to 80 percent ccs2 this is the charging port, port which is standard in the india it is taken from the european countries or european standards if you see the in america they use the ccs1 we will discuss in some other video what are these charging port and how they are different so 7.2 kilowatt ac wall box if you see that it is taking the 7.9 hours but what is this 15 amps socket so if you are using the 15 amp socket 15 amp plug point then it is taking 21 hours to charge it you can imagine so the 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 power is supplied by this 15 amp socket that is available in household it might be giving you 2.2 kilowatt hour that's why this this much time it is taking 55 kilowatt hour battery is taking 21 hours to charge so we will see that how this is derived and then 7.9 hours for the 7.2 kilowatt ac charger so here they have written this ac fast charger ac fast charger means nothing but that if you are using the 15 a plug point then it is taking 21 hours but if you are using the 7.2 kilowatt then it is taking the lesser time that is 7.9 hours but the global term for the fast charger is dc charge dc charger which we have seen like 150 kilowatt hour capacity or 175 and slow charger are the ac charger so this is how they have divided in ac and dc charging we will now try to understand that how it came let's understand that you this is your external power source from where you are getting the ac we are talking about the ac charging right now and this is your ccs2 that is the plug or charging socket or charging gun and it is going inside your vehicle and before going to battery we have some component and these are the component which are responsible to convert is ac to 
this it what is this like we ca co can call it charging source or charging contact a charger that is on corpor incorporated in a high voltage system in a vehicle is also called as ac to dc converter it converts the alternating current ac current from the main via charging contacts into a direct dc current since only direct currents can be stored in the battery so as i told earlier the battery can accept only dc current charging with direct voltage dc charging is also possible as our dc chargers are available the supply of direct voltage via a public electricity system is complex because you have to set up a dc charging station and its cost and complexity to set up or installation is very high you can see this is our obc onboard charger so in this particular onboard charger you might have seen this these two so one is input one other one is the output so suppose ac is going then dc is out so these are the coolant inlet out, outlet these coolant inlet and outlet is used to to cool down the to cool down the obc so that so during the ac to dc conversion there is a lot of heat dissipation happens and to cool down that particular system that coolant is required to cool down the your component so that's why these cooling arrangement has been given we will discuss in some other video in detail that why these coolants are given and what is the use then we will try to understand now that how this 7 point or 3.7 kilowatt came so source of power in india is single phase voltage is 230 volt or 240 volt right and total current typically we can get the 16 amps that is the single phase current which we which you can get from the source of the power okay and this if you multiply with this charging power then phase voltage into 16 amps so it will come around the 3.7 kilowatts so what does it mean so when your source of power is only able to give 3.7 kilowatt only then what is the point of increasing the onboard charger rating more than 3.7 kilowatts so this is how this onboard charging rating is derived from the source of the power so source of power it is able to give you 3.7 kilowatt so there is no point of increasing the onboard charging rating or you should keep the onboard charging rating as per your source of power i hope you understood then if you come to the three phase voltage then we have 415 and total current you can get the 32 amps and power can go to 22 kilowatts so charging power in three phase ac so if you are using the 10 amps current then you can get the 7.2 kilowatt if you are using the 16 amps current then you can get 11 kilowatt if you are using the 32 amps then you can get the 22 kilowatt so these are the standard current in the three phase system that you are going to take and if you see here that these value are exactly matching from your onboard charging rating 7.2 kilowatt 11 kilowatt so see this can little bit change but not too much it can't change too much so suppose i have taken here 240 if you take the 230 volt here it might come 6 point something but the it will be in a range of 6.5 or 6.8 or 6.7 to 7.2 kilowatt so source of the power is this and then onboard charger we are deciding based on that i hope you understand so you might be having one question that can we use 7.2 kilowatt charging gun or charger in the single phase in india especially so answer is no because in india in single phase you can able to get only 16 amps suppose if you want to use the 7.2 kilowatt charger then you have to get the three phase meter in your household and then you can use the 7.2 kilowatt 11 kilowatt also and 22 kilowatt also but most of the companies or oems give till 11 kilowatt in india so suppose if you are going to 22 kilowatt then what happens that cost of the charger or inboard charger will also increase and definitely that vehicle cost will also increase so that's why the indian oem 
avoid this 22 kilowatt however if you go outside like usa or european countries then you will get this 22 kilowatt charger so this is all about the onboard charger rating if you have some doubt about this onboard charger rating still please comment in the comment box and thank you for your time